I think something that's I've been thinking about that I've learned in Thailand over these last few years and I'm still learning is that my I learned that my capacity for endurance is so low <laughs> physical and emotional endurance and I don't think I got a taste of physical endurance until childbirth 11 years ago in in America um but being in Thailand and just moving through the seasons that we've been in, I, I think I've felt sometimes like um, I might just explode or something or die from the pressure of um, like just the emotional or even physical uh, hardships that I felt like I experienced there. Um, and maybe in comparison to some other people's hardships, they're not much. Um, but for me, it, it's been a lot. And I think I've learned during this these last eight years or this season in Thailand and even now that just because I feel like I can't endure a single day more or I can't endure one more hardship doesn't mean that... Um, that God's level of endurance is right at the same as mine. In fact, I'm learning that uh, that He's not limited like I am in the sense of feeling like I can't endure more. In fact, He's not even on terms like that. Um, he doesn't work like that. I, I just feel like He's bringing me into more freedom than I felt in the past and less focus on just each little hardship and more focus on um, joy and freedom, just resting in him. And kind of, he's teaching me to kind of get myself out of the way so that I can just go along for the ride, the ride of his kingdom in Thailand, the ride of his plan for Pantong and for Chonburi and for our Thai Buddhist friends. He has a plan for them. And I kind of just need to step back from feeling all of the hardships that I feel and just kind of hold his hand and go with him on the ride. How about you, Cecil? Um, yeah, I, I would say I feel like the Lord has taught me two main things. One is companionship. I'm a highly relational guy. Uh, some even consider me ultra relational uh, or extrovert. And, uh, and I wasn't sure if I would be able to be sustained in Thailand going to a country that I hardly knew anyone. But I felt like Jesus Christ has really been my best friend there. Uh, and he's brought other uh, people into my life as well that have been good friends uh, with me, especially the Thai people. And, and I believe the second thing that he's taught me is that uh, he can give me love for the Thai people. I didn't decide to go to Thailand because necessarily I had like this innate um, love for, for Thai people. I didn't really know, know them, but I went to Thailand praying that the Lord would give me love for uh, the Thai people, uh, for, you know, that, that society. And, uh, and I feel like he has. And so I'm, I'm grateful for that grateful for the friendships and relationships that we've made in Thailand. So companionship that I wanted, uh, he has taught me that he can supply that and also the affection for the people uh, in, in whom I work with. Hmm. So things are going to be different when you go back. And even your role is a little bit, a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, new role. Um, yeah, I would say that things are going to be different when we go back to Thailand. As a matter of fact, we have to look for a new place to live. We got kicked out of, of our house, so we're moving into quarantine for two weeks in Thailand. Um, and then after that, we're looking for a place to stay. God, where do you want us to live? And though it was inconvenient and it was a hardship at that time to be mm. kicked out right before we came back to the States, uh, it's, it's turned to a beautiful blessing because now we're asking the question, Lord, where in this town do you want us to live? Uh, we're feeling like the Lord has perhaps put on our heart that he wants us to live in a, in a kind of storefront townhouse place amongst you know, those who sell uh, on the main road. And maybe the Lord uh, would like for us to have uh, our down, downstairs storefront to be somewhat of a kids club, um, homework center slash coffee shop or, or what have you. Uh, also, I mean, we'd be able to um, have events there, outreach, uh, worship there uh, as well. 
And so it seems like that's that's a new uh, avenue that the Lord is uh, bringing us uh, into, um, as well as pouring more into the local leaders in, Th- in Thailand. And and uh, I'd say the third is that I've been given this this different role, if you will, in Thailand, which is a, a regional coach. And so um, in Southeast Asia, we have around 30 missionaries, and about half of them I'll be able to uh, keep in touch on a monthly basis and just walk alongside and encourage them, uh, pray for them. Um, yeah, if there's anything that I could offer as far as like counsel or, or advice, love to serve them in that way. So that's a new role that I didn't think I was going to be stepping into that I am. Um, and, and I love the Thai people, and I'm honored to serve my uh, missionary brothers and sisters. And so that's a new chapter uh, in my life as well. How do you feel about that? Is there any, any uh, angst or concerns or questions? Or you know, is this, I mean, you're stepping into something you've never done before, or? Yeah, I, I think st- stepping into a new role for me, there's always, there's always angst and fear and insecurities um, and anxiety. But, but I feel like this past, these past 38 years, and especially the past 18 years of walking with Jesus, that he has shown me to walk into my fears and face my fears and that he's always with me. So there's all of that. There's, there's the idea of, of feeling uh, un, unqualified and incompetent. I shouldn't be in that role, you know, that, that role. What do I have to offer? Many of the brothers and sisters who I work with are amazing, just amazing uh, people who love Jesus, amazing missionaries. And so there's all of that. But uh, I'm hoping that, um, as Scripture says, we walk by faith and not by what we see, that the Lord will take me every step of the way. Any uh, additional thoughts in terms of the new thing that you're, the new chapter you're stepping into, all from your perspective? I don't know what to expect. Um, at being the wife of... of uh, Senor Ramos. <laughs> a regional coach. Um, I'm glad that you have a team of mm-hmm. people that are going to help you mm-hmm. and that are also um, having a bunch of different roles mm-hmm. in, yeah. in Thailand to help uh, resource the missionaries. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this new season. I feel like there's a few different things that are kind of big and new. Um, I think our, this season's going to look much different, but I, I like that. It feels like progression feels like progress towards more kingdom in Pantong. Yeah, multiply, we've tossed around the word uh, multiplication a lot, and, and we've also talked about partnership. Um, how does partnership look in, the, in your setting with the Thai leaders, the, the people that you're working together with? How does that look? And then... It's not just partnership on the ground, it's also you're partnering with us hmm. back here. What's important for you about partnership? And speak to us, to tell us a little bit about that setting, but also speak to us here, who are partnering with you too. Yeah, I, I think po- partnership is just a fascinating concept. And when I think of my partnership, uh, or our partnership in Thailand, especially with the uh, local leaders or the national leaders, the the, the Thai Christians. Uh, for me, it's it's something that has been extremely beautiful and, and liberating. And the fact that Trace and I go to Thailand and we're not necessarily calling all the shots, or we're mm-hmm. we're not um, we're not making all the big decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't all rest on me or us. There are already followers of Jesus there, uh, mature followers of Jesus, amazing leaders who we um, get to come alongside in this partnership and this concept of um, mutual submission where I, where I am uh, honored to submit to them and uh, listen to them and, and hear about their vision. But in the same time, they ask us, like, what has God put on our hearts and what kind of uh, unique uh, giftings and talents has Jesus given us so we could really... Um, complement each other well. And so in Thailand, the partnership looks beautiful because we get along very well with those leaders whom we work with, Pimot, Pilot, uh, Pian, and, and P. Somchai, you know, uh, Pastor Somchai. And so uh, for me, that's fascinating. And also there's partnership with uh, those back here in North America, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the States as well, where they are doing ministry. Many are working hard, and they're they're partnering with us, resourcing us in a variety of different ways uh, through uh, t- 
text messages, emails, letters, uh, resources, finances, prayer, coming physically and seeing the work and praying over us and, and helping us do the ministry. There's a variety of ways in which they partner with us. So in a sense, they're kind of encouraging us, building us uh, up, pouring into us, and then we and serving us, and then we get to do that in Thailand. It's this beautiful kind of ripple effect. Um, and so, yeah, we're honored to be part of that, that journey as well. I'd say for me that the, the biggest sacrifice or the, or the deepest pain that I feel is being away from um, our friends, our family, our supporters, our brothers and sisters, sisters in Christ because they're so dear and precious to me and because they mean so much to us and our, you know, our family and our kids. Um, so I think I would just like to tell them that I love them, that, I, that we are thankful and grateful for all of their love and support. And um, yeah, they're just, I feel unendless like loyalty to the cause and devotion to our family. And so I feel this, over, this overflow of gratitude towards them and thankfulness to, to Jesus for, for putting them in, in my life. And I really feel like their, their, their love and their prayers are the wind beneath my wings that keeps me going. And when I'm coming back and, and when they reach out and say, hey, as soon as you touch down, like, let me take you to coffee, let me take you to lunch, tell me, talk to me about what's been going on or how your heart is, or especially when we're over in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, and they're consistent, persistent with reaching, checking up on me or us weekly or bi-monthly or whatever the case may be. Um, it's just so special because I know that they're, that they're with us. So um, to our church, our church is here in Bakersfield and um, to our friends and, and to even our churches in uh, the West Coast and um, all over who have been praying for us and our, for our friends who have loved us these last few months during the pandemic and during our time in America. Um, and also for our friends, the same friends and other friends who love us so well in Thailand when we're in Thailand, I just say thank you so much. Um, we really couldn't be in Thailand um, without you. And when you send us messages and when you send us packages and when teams come and you send something with them for us or you, you send us a message and let us know that you've been praying for our national leaders and been praying for uh, the pictures of people that we've given you to pray for. It means like a lot. And we couldn't be there without your love and support. And the financial support is just a small part of it. Really what we need um, that you give us is just... Um, just the remembrance that we're there and that we're here and that um, that we want to honor God in Thailand and that you support us in that. You come alongside us, like on the soldiers on the battlefield, you're side by side, shoulder to shoulder with us. So thank you so much. I would like to say, again, thank you for, for everything that you have done for us and given us. And we just want to continue to uh, encourage you to seek Jesus as that, that is our heart, what we're trying to do. We don't do it perfectly, of course, but um, we feel like the Lord has just really um, crystallized uh, his mission on our heart, especially the past uh, several years, to keep our eyes on King Jesus, that, that my identity, our identity, first and foremost, is of a follower of Jesus, is a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus before I'm uh, an American. I'm a follower of Jesus before anything else. And so I think his work and his kingdom is what I desire for us to be about here in the States and, and around the world um, because it's my heart that we we offer everything up to, to the Lord, everything up for Jesus, that we put it all on the line. All of our chips are in on King Jesus, right? Uh, scripture says, the Apostle Paul writes in one of his epistles, even if my life is poured out like a drink offering, if that's it, like what an honor that is. And, and for me, though we might not always see the fruit of our ministry in Thailand, even if it was a life that was spent as a drink offering to the Lord, and above our shoulders, perhaps the next generation would reap those, uh, the benefit of the fruit of our labor. What a joy it is to be poured out because uh, King Jesus is worth it. So we just want to say personally thank you for everything, for standing with us, um, because we, we need you and we're grateful to the Lord for you as well.